What's going on you guys? Welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about the rising cost of film and how to survive it. Let's not waste any time. Let's get into it. We've all heard the news. Kodak is going up again. 18 to 30 percent this year and for those of us who have been enduring the price increases steadily for the past three years now we're not surprised disappointed maybe a little sad sure but we're not surprised now there are a number of emotions that you yourself may have experienced when you heard this news Steadily, gosh, even though I shoot films, it's so expensive. Every time I turn around, the price is going up. Every, every, every day it's going up. I'm so sick of this man who has money like this. What can I do? They must think I'm making money. It's expensive. It's costing more money every year. Where's my digital camera? <sighs> yeah, this thing still works. This camera's fine. Can it T5i? In 20, 22? Why not? Go digital, go digital. Now these are all acceptable responses. As film photographers, we are humans too. I'm not here to judge. I am here to offer some insights on how to continue shooting film and to save money while doing it in 2022. Let's get into my four tips on not only surviving the Kodak price hikes of 2022, but also thriving throughout the year. Lean into 35 millimeter film. Now I know medium format is sexy. The allure is so great it sucks you in that 120 millimeter film. How can you deny it when it's calling you? When everyone looks like they're shooting it, you wanna shoot it too. I've been there. I've experienced these feelings. The truth is medium format is pretty pricey. Sometimes when I run the numbers on how much money I spend to shoot medium format photography, it hurts my feelings. So I try not to do it too often, but when I need a reality check, I do it to punish myself. The film itself costs significantly more per exposure and you get less images. Plus the usual medium format camera costs way more money than a 35 millimeter camera. 35 millimeter cameras are significantly cheaper and there's way more variety to choose from. So much variety with 35 millimeter camera. 35 millimeter cameras are also lighter, typically easier to carry around for everyday use, great for travel, and most systems have an array of glass to pair with it. There's this prevailing idea that you can't make quality photos on 35 millimeter film. That if you really want to make some bangers, you really want to get the best photo, you have to be shooting medium format. And that's just not true. You know how many photographers spent their whole career shooting exclusively 35 millimeter cameras? A lot. Like so many, just so many. Making quality photos is a collaboration between the photographer and her tools. So really become a master at your 35 millimeter cameras to increase your eye and your skill set. The results will speak for themselves. Black and white. Did you know Pablo Picasso had many different phases throughout his career? There was his blue period, his rose period, the African influence period, and cubism period, to name a few. These periods in his career would last years until he exhausted all possibilities exploring these themes. And then he'd move on to a new inspiration and get engrossed in that period in his career. As photographers, we too should embrace the idea that we too go through phases throughout our photography journeys. I strongly suggest you shoot more black and white photography moving into the new year if you aren't already doing so. Black and white film is cheaper than color film. There's also way more variety in the film stocks available in black and white versus in color. There's not just one company dominating at all. When I first got started in film photography, I shot black and white film exclusively for a little bit over two years. I did this because it was cheaper and it was easier to develop the film at home myself. By doing so, I gained a better understanding of the medium of black and white photography. I was able to simplify my approach to making photographs and it helped me train my eye and cultivate my style. I often find myself getting more experimental and exploring with black and white film stocks because it doesn't hurt my pocket as much as color film does. And each film stock offers something new and unique from the film manufacturers. Maybe the next few years may be your black and white period. Bulk load. 
just do it. I feel like I've been saying this for years. Like I really do. I feel like I've been saying vocal on my channel since I started my channel, but I'm going to stand by it probably forever because I have been doing it for years and I have been saving so much money by bulk loading. It's like, sure, the initial upstart costs may make people clutch their pearls, but they really shouldn't when you consider how much Kodak Film has raised to. So you should really just invest in a bulk loading kit with the idea that you too can save a lot of money by doing so. I don't remember if I've made a video on how to bulk load. I feel like I did, but it might have been in like the early days of my channel. So the quality may be trash. If so, I'll have to look into that. But nonetheless, you should bulk load, people. Just just do it. I'm telling you, save, save yourself. People typically tend to pay attention when I start talking dollars. So let's break down some dollars for you, okay? Case in point. If you go to Adorama.com right now, not affiliated, not sponsored, but it's just random. You go there, BH, Freestyle, whoever, pick your poison. You go to a retailer and you try to buy some Kodak T-Max, one roll of 36 exposure, you're going to end up paying around $11. Now, 100 feet of Kodak T-Max, you'll typically get about 18 rolls out of that batch. So what I did was I bought my 100 feet in 2021 before the price went up. So I got mine for $119. So 119, 18 rolls, and you get a total of pow per roll. I don't know about you, but $6 and 60 some odd cents versus $11. I'm okay to say $5. Come on guys. With the increase happening in 2022, the cost of bulk loading film is gonna go up by like, I don't know, 10 bucks maybe. I just checked Adorama, it looks like it's selling for like 129 right now. I know Freestyle is selling their 100 feet of Kodak film for 150 some odd dollars. Don't go there. They're not sponsoring me. I'ma just keep it real. You have to go where the deal is. But the bottom line is you're gonna save way more money bulk loading your Kodak black and white film than you are buying it per roll. But let's get off Kodak. Let's say you don't even want to buy Kodak. The cheapest 100 feet of film I ever bought was Arista EDU 100. I got it for $21, yo. $21 for 18 rolls. Let's run that math. $1.16, yo, per roll. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If you just do your research, experiment with these film stocks, you too will find yourself in a good situation. The other day while looking in my refrigerator, I came across like 10 rolls of uh, Ultra Fine Extreme 400 that I hadn't used yet. It felt a little bit like a, a birthday gift. Like, oh snap, look what I did for myself and forgot about, you know? I still have some rolls of Arista EDU 100 in there. It's the gift that keeps giving bulk loading. Right now, the last time I checked, around the time this video is being put out, if you like Ultra Fine Extreme, which is also a very affordable black and white film stock, you can get 100 or 400 Asa of their film stock for around $50. $50 at 18 rolls, let's do that math. $2.78, man, look at it. Ugh. What it comes down to in the end, guys, is bulk load. You know, bulk up in 2022. Don't let these price hikes deter you, bulk. Explore. I know portrait is considered the standard by a lot of people, especially people who enjoy shooting portraits. People gravitate towards portrait. They push a lot of portrait products. Even here on YouTube, you see so many uh, YouTubers shooting portrait and that's it. They don't really showcase anything else that they're using. However, I'm going to swim away from the current. And yeah, you know, my arms might get tired going against that strong current, but I would do it anyway because there are so many other film stocks available on the market that you should give a chance to see if it suits your film style more. Truth is your favorite YouTuber may have more money to spend on Porsche 400 than you do. Don't limit yourself. Your 20 bucks may go farther in a different direction. 20 bucks, boy, I remember when I used to do something. 20 bucks doesn't do much anymore for film photography, God. <laughs> there are a lot of fun and quality film stocks to give a try outside of the Porsche film line. I myself have been gravitating more towards shooting consumer film stocks for this film channel. Because I have a film channel, I actually have to shoot film. <laughs> so consumer film stocks really help me out when it comes to saving money. 
in companies I have my eye on. Um, Silbera is one. They have some film stocks that I've been curious to try out. Filmography I've been using more and more throughout 2021 and I plan on doing the same in 2022 as well, giving it an opportunity to really explore the film stock, see if it speaks to me. Of course there's those companies like Fujifilm and Cinestill that put out uh, color film as well. Cinestill's a bit pricier, know your pocket. Finding alternative color film stocks outside of Kodak will not only save you money, but it also has potential of setting your work aside from the majority of people who mostly shoot Kodak products. And saving money just might lift your spirits. It sure lifted mine. Now I don't wanna leave this video with any type of negative sour taste in your mouth about the increased price of Kodak film this year, because there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It's far off in the distance right now, but it's there. More people shooting film is amazing. It opens the door for more companies to get involved. Hopefully one day new film cameras will hit the market as well because of the influx and popularity of film photography. Opportunities to uh, advance film technology also present themselves when more people take an active role in shooting film. And if we can get more young people involved shooting film at an early age, there's a greater possibility that film photography will be around much longer. So let's recap my tips on not only surviving the Kodak price increase in 2022, but thriving while doing it. Shoot more 35 millimeter film. Shoot more black and white photography. Bulk load people, bulk load. Explore other film stocks. All right, before you go, comment down below and let me know how you plan on saving money in 2022 while shooting film photography. If you made it this far in the video, please go ahead and hit that like button for me. It helps me out so much here on YouTube. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel as I would love to have you. And I will see you in the next one. All right, everybody. Peace. That's awful, bro. That backfire is serious. Serious. God, my mouth is popping. Should have made some tea.